a candidate for Congress in Illinois' 10th district uh, in the Chicago suburbs. Uh, Ilya, you worked for Move On before and are, are now running. Thanks so much for joining us on Up. Thanks for having me. Well, I, I guess the first question is, what, what motivated you at age 25, am I correct, to run for Congress? Yeah, well, you know, my family came here two decades ago as Jewish refugees. My, stad, my dad started out delivering pizzas all across Chicago to make ends meet. And over time, through hard work and support from our community, they were able to provide a better life for themselves and for me. And I see that sense of possibility slipping away for people all across the community, that my generation won't have as good a life as the previous ones did. Do you feel do you feel like that is something that you share that that is something you share with members of your sort of cohort? I mean, when you're when you're working on Move On or when you talk to voters in your district now, do you feel like that's something that extends across everyone? Is it particularly acute of, of, of people of, of your age? You know, I live in Illinois' 10th congressional district. It's one of the most diverse districts in the country. And what you find right now is that sense of economic insecurity is so widespread. Whether you're 22 and coming out of college and feeling like you can't find your first job, or you're 55 and wondering if you'll ever be able to work again after being laid off from a job you've had for 20 years. That sense of insecurity is just real all over the place. You know, I, I had a friend who ran for Congress uh, in Alabama, uh, and just, just a few years older than you. It was uh, back in 2008. Um, how do you raise money if you're 25 years old? I mean, the, the hardest thing of running for Congress is finding a lot of people, particularly wealthy people, who can max out to you. And it's hard to have a real robust Rolodex of such contacts. Um, are, you, are you finding that a challenge? I think that's one of the central challenges in our democracy and our election process. That normally you find 100 people who can write you a $5,000 check and you're ready to run. So we've had to build a campaign differently. We have house parties all around the district where people write a check for $10, $20, $50. But then they do more. They go out, they knock on doors, they make phone calls. So we've built a campaign on almost 10,000 donors who are chipping in $20, $30, $40 at a time. But they're invested in the effort. And that investment translates into much more than just a few dollars. It's them going out and talking to voters. And only if we build that kind of grassroots campaign can we actually defeat some of the forces of uh, big money and special interest in our politics. So it's an alternative model, but we know it's worked. It worked for President Obama. It worked for the Dean campaign back in the day. And now it's working right here in the 10th district. I remember when I ran for Congress, I wasn't quite as young as you, but I was the youngest woman ever elected. And of course, nobody would give me any money. And we were able to do a very much of a grassroots campaign. But the great part of it was, and I think it's a really important point that he made, I remember walking up the steps of the Capitol to vote, and all these lobbyists would be standing there, you'd walk it's like between a gauntlet, and they would say, you owe me this, you owe me this. But they never said it to me, because right. I never had to raise that money from them. I never could, they wouldn't give it to me. So. And those were innocent days compared those to the innocent days. So <laughs> to being, we have now. Raising money on a grassroots basis and reducing that kind of um, need to depend on big money, allows you to be free in a way to represent your constituents, which is what our democracy is supposed to be about and so much has been perverted. So I, good luck I wonder if, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Victoria. Well, sorry. I, I just want to, first of all, we have a youthful candidate, which warms my heart as a political scientist. But I wanted to ask Ilya what the coalition was looking like in terms of incorporating the youth. So right. you may not have that money that comes with the Rolodex of, mm -hmm. of being a 50-year-old candidate, but what are you doing on the ground in Chicago, especially with the North Shore area and build on the wave of, of President Obama? So I just kind of wanted to get a sense of what that grassroots mobilization would be. Yeah, what's that look like, Ilya? Well, I think that's the heart of the question. You know, all across the country, we're hearing Democrats aren't excited, they're not energized, they're feeling down. And yet, mm -hmm. here in this campaign, we have over 350 volunteers from all walks of life, from all age groups, who are excited because they feel like they actually have a stake in this campaign. That the core economic message we're driving about how we put people back to work applies to you whether you're 25 or 55. And I think that ability to cross those generational lines, to say the old ideas aren't working and we need a change, is something that actually can build a broader coalition of high school students who are wondering what the next generation will bring for them, and senior citizens who actually want to pass on a better world for the next generation as well. You know, uh, what's interesting is that, well, he's to the manner born. Obviously, he's 25, but he reads like he's a statesman. Uh, so that's great stuff. But I wonder what, in the North Shore, if it's, if it's, if it's reading bad there, what's happening?
happening in the surrounding districts, say further south, right. where you've got, you know, outside the loop where people are suffering. Have you been able to forge any coalitions with people there so that the unrest and the discouragement that you feel in your district is being mirrored and even deepened there? Any, any kind of coalitional possibility? Well, I think what's interesting in my district is just how economically diverse it is. We have some communities with 8% unemployment and others with 19. And that's before you add in underemployment people who are working 20, 25 hours a week, counted as employed but still can't afford their day to day needs. So I think what we've shown is you can build that coalition between people who are middle class, people who aspire to be middle class and feel like that's falling further out of reach, and then people who have been doing quite well, but suddenly their kid who went to law school, moved back in with their parents, can't find a job that they felt like would be promised to them, and they're about to fall off their health care too. Mm -hmm. So I think our ability has been to bridge not just generational lines, but also economic lines, and to set a model for in other districts as well, that if you run strongly with backbone for the values of middle class families, that that's a pathway to victory. And ultimately, that's a pathway to actually governing this country and making the changes we need to make. Ilya Shaman, he's a 25-year-old uh, candidate for Congress in the 10th District of Illinois. Ilya, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. The new numbers on America's poor didn't just find a generation.